Hello and welcome to Using In-Memory Tables. My name is Steve Hamilton and I'll be your instructor for this course. Okay, let's get started. In this lesson, we will look at the new feature of memory optimized tables. A memory optimized table is a table that is designed to go into memory. There are certain advisors that we can issue within SQL Server to determine if this is a good candidate to go become a memory optimized table. We can also create a memory optimized file group and then place that table in that file group. We will also look at the native stored procedures as well as at the end there will be labs on using an in-memory database capabilities. So what is an in-memory table? Well it is exactly as described. It is a tire table that is going to reside in memory. Even the, D the DLLs are going to be stored in memory. So the table as a whole is going to be a memory optimized table. Keep in mind, if this is something you're going to do, the table should be small and static. You do not want to put the sales table in memory. It will just consume way too much memory and it will not be very useful. So in memory tables would be small and they would be static. An in memory table may also be indexed and it can co-mingle with disk tables. Basically all we're saying here is that the table is going to solely reside in memory and it can work with other non-memory related tables. The end user will know no different. This, is, this table will be queried and optimized the same, thing, same way use a normal T-SQL. However, there will be certain data types that will not be allowed. These data types would include things like texts and images, which would make sense. You don't want to take all of your pictures and place them into memory. Again, those pictures consume a lot of space. They can consume up to two gigabytes each. That's a lot of space to consume in memory. A couple of rules to remember with an in-memory table. You cannot have an identity column and you cannot have any foreign key constraints. So an in-memory table can have a primary key, but it cannot have an identity column, and it cannot be related to any other table. How do we determine if a table is a good candidate for an in-memory table? We can use the new feature, which is called the in-memory table advisor. The in-memory table advisor will provide advice on a table that can be placed into memory. It will tell us if this is a good candidate for an in-memory table. Are there any identity columns? Are there any referential integrity constraints? If there are, can they be broken? We will also look at what's called tables with hot pages. The tables that are, are very, very hot, they may be good candidates to be placed into memory, only if they're small, static, and do not change a lot. So first of all, what do we need to do to create an in-memory table? There's two main steps. First of all, you have to create a file group and then you must populate that file group with files. That file group must be defined as a memory optimized data. So the file group that you're going to contain or create has to have the keywords contains memory optimized data. The next thing that you have to do is add the file to that file group. So here, I'm altering the database GoGo, go, and I'm creating a file group that contains memory optimized data. So I'm adding the file GoGo memory to the file group memfg. So you have to set up file groups and files before you can create memory optimized tables. Then, when you create the in-memory table, you're going to create the table as you normally would. However, you're going to say with memory optimized or equal to on, and then the durability can be set to schema only, data only, or schema and data. In this particular case, we're saying the durability is going to be set to both schema as well as data. You can create indexes on in-memory tables. However, the indexes that you create have to be a non-clustered index. So we can create a 
memory table, we can create indexes, but they have to be a non-clustered index. When we create an index, we're going to give it the width, memory optimization is on, and the durability the same way we did it when we created the table. So here, I'm going to go into the database name, and I'm going to create a new table. But before I create this new table, I'm going to go through a memory optimization advisor. So really what I'm doing is I'm looking for the memory optimization advisor for this table. For the table employees, I'm going to look at this and say this is not a good candidate to be a memory optimized table because it does have identity columns and it has several referential integrity constraints. So I would not want to place this into memory. Within the memory advisor, there are five components that we go through. It goes to the validation. Basically, is this a valid table? It goes through warnings. Oh, these are the problems that you're going to run into. These are the options that what you can do. This is how you can migrate your primary keys and index keys. When we looked at that employees table, validation and warnings immediately kicked it out that it would not be a good candidate to be an in-memory table. But we have to verify all five steps, the validations, the warnings, options, any sort of primary key migration, as well as index migration. And at the very end, we get a nice little summary as far as if this would work or not. Now again, we took that memory advisor and we looked at it for the employees table, and it was not a good candidate. We can do the same thing with procedures. We can do what's called native compiling procedures. Basically what this does is it makes the procedure run faster. We have more efficient codes and it can access memory tables. If you're going to do this with stored procedures, you will only really do this on stored procedures that are very, very large. And the stored procedures that we have created, which are very, very small, that simply access data in a table would not be good candidates for this. You would only want to natively compile very, very large procedures. It is, very, it is much more efficient. It can access memory tables, but it would only, only be useful if the procedure itself is very large. So the options that you would use for a natively compiled store procedure, you'd give it the keywords native compilation with schema binding where the schema binding is going to bind this to a specific schema. And then you would give it the execute as commands, like execute as caller, execute as owner, execute as user. You also have to give it the keyword begin atomic. So these are the specific steps that you can use when you create a natively compiled store procedure. You would give it the keyword native compile. You would say schema binding, which is optional, you would give the execute as, which is optional, and then you would give begin atomic. So again, the reason that you want to use natively compiled procedures is the code is more efficient, they execute faster, and they have more in-memory advanced features. So one of the main reasons you're going to use native compiled is if you have a lot of in-memory tables, then consider using natively compiled procedures. The other thing to keep in mind is that you would also only create native compiled procedures if the procedures themselves are very, very large. So in-memory tables or in-memory activity is going to be a combination of in-memory tables as well as native procedures. The combination of both of these can have a significant and dramatic improvement on performance. Keep in mind, with an in-memory table, you first must have an in-memory file group assign files to that file group, and then create the table in that file group. Please take a moment to download the exercise guide on the course page on the materials tab. Complete the exercise, watch the demo, and see how it's done. Thank you for attending.